I don't know if you guys saw this, but the Consumer Watchdog, which is basically the Consumer Federation of America, advises buyers, home buyers, to pay real estate agents 2% or less. Can you believe that they've come out and publicly said this after we've had a literal price fixing war, let's just say, in court? over this and now you have this agency this this consumer centric coming out and literally saying an exact number two percent they're saying or less they're trying to use maybe the or less as a way to hedge the argument that they're trying to say a specific amount for the price fixing argument but i mean this is insane for for this federation to come out here and literally try to say what real estate agent should make so I want to get into this. And if, if if the Consumer Federation, if this watchdog is going to go out here and advise buyers on what they should pay their agents, right? Somebody who has no idea what an agent actually does, right? They, you know, and you can tell by the article. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the article a little bit. I'm gonna show you a few things that I find quite hilarious. I'm like, am I living in a meme? Am I living in a meme? But you've got someone who doesn't even know what what is going on in the industry, what agents actually do, what the value that they bring. Otherwise, they wouldn't say the things that they're saying. Telling buyers exactly what to pay. If they're going to do that, then I want to advise real estate agents what they should be charging buyers. So that's what I want to get into today. I want to I want to share with you a couple of um, inserts from the article. Um, I'll do that. And then I want to go into, hey, I want to go into what you should charge buyers. If they're going to try to tell you what to charge, to, to tell tell the buyers what to charge, uh, what agents should charge, then I think somebody needs to come out here with some advice for the agents. So that's what I'm here today to do for you, because I know most of the of you that are watching me are real estate agents, and I appreciate you so much. Before I get into that, I just want to share Today was the last day of our recent uh, Set More Listing Appointments Challenge. There was over 500 agents in the challenge, and the testimonials and the breakthroughs and the transformations where it humbled me so much to sit there and listen to what people got out of the challenge um, and listings that people got, um, breakthroughs, uh, moments of clarity. Um, I just, I, it's, it's thank you, God, right? That's all I can say. Glory to God um, that he gave me the gift uh, to, to help you guys find the transformations that you're looking for in your business, in your life. Um, and I could automate this thing and not do it live and just have it on running on autopilot and it would do, it would be successful, but no, I do them live because I love doing them and I love being with you guys and I love seeing the transformations and answering the questions and everything else that comes into it. Is it a lot of work? Yes, um, but it's what I love to do. So the next one is September 9th. You can put that on your calendar. It's a four-day challenge. Uh, setmorelistingappointments.com. I'll put a link in the description if you want to sign up for it and, and be there. Um, and if you haven't been on one, Trust me, just look at the reviews, look at the testimonials, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to take some of the testimonials out of this week and clip them out for you guys so you can see. It was, uh, it, it was, it was, it was an emotional moment. <laughs> like there, there are some serious breakthroughs happening. Let's get into it. So let's go to the article. Consumer Watchdog advises buyers to pay uh, agents 2% or less. Thanks, Mr. Watchdog, for all your advice. I don't know why in the world, Inman, by the way, this is a side note. As I was looking at this, I'm like, why do they put a picture of a cake right here? I mean, are they trying to say, like, somebody's having their cake and eating it too or something? I This is the strangest, oddest picture uh, for a for an article that I've ever seen. Okay, this just... It's just a side note there. The cake looks pretty good. I, I don't know why in the world somebody would put that there for this article. Anyway, um, so when negotiating compensation with agents, buyers should settle on a dollar amount, a dollar amount that pays them no more than 2% of the home sales price, according to the advice released Tuesday by the Consumer Federation of America. All right. This comes after the, you know, the, the NAR thing. Um, 
basically this just explains where we are, you know, with the multiple listing service taking buyer agent commissions out. The new rules require changes in agents' practices that may confuse consumers. Well, heck yeah, it's going to confuse consumers. It's, you know, 90% of agents are confused, particularly because many agents will try to preserve sellers' compensation of buyer agents to maintain 5 to 6% uh, uh, overall commissions. I, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> like, where are you getting this information from? You know, particularly because many agents will try to preserve seller compensation of buyer agents to maintain five or six percent overall commissions. That doesn't even make sense. You're saying the compensation of buyer agents to maintain five or six percent. Then you're saying percent overall commissions. Like, what you're saying doesn't make sense. That th this this sentence makes zero sense are you talking about buyer agent obviously you're talking about the full commission but why did you talk about buyer agent com compensation of buyer agent in there right um the new rules provide both opportunities and risks for consumers lions and tigers and bears <laughs> oh my knowledgeable home buyers and sellers will take it will be able to take advantage of the opportunities and avoid the risks right? Better take advantage of the opportunities, 2% or less in dollars. So he's, he, he wants to specify, like he wants to clarify in dollars. I'll cover that in just a second. They offered three primary pieces of advice, including that consumers discuss and negotiate their agent's compensation in dollar amounts. And that that amount um, added up to no more than 2% of the home sales price. So what they want to do is they want the seller, the buyer, they want both of them. They want both of them to negotiate a dollar amount, a flat fee. Okay. Like they, they didn't use the word flat fee in this, in this article, but I'm telling you, that's, that's what they want. They want it in dollars, a flat fee, right? That's no more than 2%. So they want you to you know, estimate, okay, this is about the range of a home that, that I want to buy or sell. 2% of that is this number. That's what we're going to pay you in dollars, period, regardless of what the price is. That's what this organization is saying. The basic reason that the industry has been sued by the Department of Justice and by private citizens is because of, for a century, realtors have colluded to set rates in, uh, in which now typically are 5 to 6%. It's like, Real estate agents can't even agree on, you know, what color the grass is, you know, much less how are we going to collude? We can't even, you know, agree on, you know, what are, <laughs> it's crazy. The class action settlement for the first time effectively allows buyers to negotiate their agent's compensation. Okay. It's not a bad thing. Buyers should take the opportunity to do so. Setting a goal in dollar uh, terms of 2% of the home price or less. And so should sellers. Right. And get this. So should sellers who have had the same opportunity, but frequently have decided not to pursue it. What they're saying is, is that sellers have had the opportunity. They've had the opportunity for a long time. But they've decided not to pursue it. Why did they decide not to pursue it? I'll tell you why they decided not to pursue it, because they know the value. You don't, Mr. Watchdog. You don't realize, like, okay, the market speaks. Let, let, me, let me explain economics to you, Mr. Watchdog. The market is the market, right? So if I go out there and I try to sell something, let's say I try to sell this, right, this drink. If I try to sell this drink, I'm not going to sell it for more than what somebody's willing to pay based on the value of the drink, right? I'm not going to be able to sell it for more than that. I could sell it for less, but I can't sell it for more. So when you go out there and sellers have continued to pay five and six percent over the years, even though they could always negotiate it down and, and, and have negotiated down. Right. Just about every deal that I've ever done, I've negotiated my commission. Very rarely did I actually get six percent. I may have started at six. I didn't end up at six. There were deals where I got six. But when you look at the percentage, it was low as far as a full commission. You. I'm just I'm just saying it's always been negotiable and they've been able to negotiate it forever, but yet they still come in around five to six percent. Why is that? Because that's what it's worth. That's what the work that the listing agent does is worth to the seller. That's what you don't get. You keep trying to put a dollar on this 
when, you know, and, and, you, and you're pulling that dollar out of just nowhere. You're just saying, based on what I, based, based on what I think, that agents should get no more than 2%, and that should be formed in the amount of a dollar, a dollar amount rather than a percentage. And I know why you don't want percentage, because you think that that's going to incentivize agents to negotiate, you know, higher if they're representing a buyer so they can get more commission. Are you kidding me? Am I trying to negotiate $5,000 more dollars so I can get 3% of 5,000 and, and maybe end up losing the deal over doing that? Are you kidding me? you you have no idea what it's like. You, you should, Mr. White, I think somebody on this board needs to have been an agent. Anybody saying the stuff that this agency is saying should have some kind of rapport in the real estate industry of some sorts. I mean, how are we even taking someone who knows nothing about it, never been in it, and just pulling numbers just just out of their brain, like out of nowhere with no, there's, there's I'm going to show you in a minute, like the way they came up to this was, this is what I came up with. Are you kidding me? It's insane. But the reasons why sellers haven't pursued negotiating it any lower, they are negotiating, but not down two or 3% from where it was. Why? Because it's worth, that and more. People don't pay for the exact value they get. Meaning that if I have $10, I'm not going to trade you this $10 for $10 you have. I'll trade it for $50 you have. I'll make that deal. See, people aren't paying 6% because they feel like they're getting the 6% worth of value. They feel like they're getting more than 6% of the value. Why? Because we handle everything for them. They sleep like a baby. Sleep like a baby. Right. And then the deal just gets done and money is wired in their account. And we worry about everything on the back end. This is going to be the greatest social experiment that we've ever seen. You know, let's let buyers go out and try to be unrepresented. Go for it, buyers. Be unrepresented. It doesn't bother us. That, that's the thing you don't get. We don't care. We're going to charge what we charge because we know what we do. You don't. And if you don't, go try it on your own. You'll figure it out real quick and you'll be willing Here's a bet I'll make, Stephen, Mr. Watchdog, that I want you to go out and do deals, and I bet you anything, you'd be willing to pay more than 2%, more than 2% to go out there and do a deal. Now, if you want to do the deal on your own for because you can't find an agent that would go less than 2%, then we're happy. We don't have to do all that work. It's like, I'm not going to roof a house. I'm not going to roof a house. Uh, you know, for a thousand dollars when it's, you know, two weeks worth of work, I'm not going to roof a house for a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars when it's a thirty, forty thousand dollar job. Right. And all this labor and tents. Right. I'm not comparing real estate to roofing, although I did roof houses or roofed houses for a good five, six years of my life. Solid. I'm not comparing it to that. But 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 financially compared to the value that we bring, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. This is funny. I asked uh, uh, Stephen um, how they arrived at the 2%. The 2% or less is my best judgment. As a realistic goal, most home sellers and buyers should aspire and to, uh, uh, to and attain. Already in some markets, uh, most buyer agents are charging 2%, but listing agents are unfairly charging more. Why is it unfair? If it's something somebody's willing to pay for the service that we're offering, why is that classified as unfair? And I think it's funny because when they ask him the question, how they arrived at the 2% figure, I'm sure that the interviewer was, was asking for some tangible, real, comparable data that to go by. Like, what data did you use to come up with this 2%? Where did this come from? That's not what we got. What we got was the 2% or less is my best judgment as a realistic goal. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you and, and why do we care? And by the way, nothing that they say changes the market. Nothing they say changes the market. There's already a bunch of people out there saying do 2%, do 1%. It doesn't change anything. We're going to charge what we charge. Um, he goes on to say, 
He's not changing from the prediction of many years ago that with decoupling, rates will eventually decline to an average of 3% for double dips, meaning that if a listing agent represents the buyer or an unrepresented buyer buys the property and they get a little extra commission because of it, et cetera, et cetera. If one agent is basically handling the whole deal, buyer and seller, that, that rates will decline, commission rates, to an average of 3%. And 4%, um, when two agents are involved, meaning two on this side, two on that side, if two agents are involved, um, though there will be much greater uh, variation in rates depending on the uh, competence, efforts, uh, out-of-pocket costs of the agent. Yeah, that's true. So this last paragraph about trying to um, basically predict where rates are going to end up and everything, that's just to be taken with a grain of salt. I mean, that's literally just to be taken with a grain of salt because like all the prediction I make about like nobody knows this, like we're going into the unknown. You can compare it to other countries, but other countries haven't went through what we've went through with the entire NAR thing and being in the situation that we're in and then reversing it back the other way. We've never been through this. We don't know how the market's going to react. We don't know how consumers are going to react. We don't know anything. And it's going to take a while for all this to, to flush out to really know exactly where we stand. I don't think that he could be too far off with 3% being a, on both sides, 4%. I'm not saying it, it might not go to that. That'd be rock bottom. I can tell you that'd be worse. That is the worst case scenario. That is as bad as it's going to get. I can tell you that. Um, I think it's going to be higher than that. You know, I think it's going to be like two and a half, and you know, like four for double dips, five if two agents are involved. But, hey, it's just predictions. Nobody knows. I'm not going to fight them on that. What I'm going to fight them on is trying to give advice to buyers and try to put it out there like you shouldn't pay any more than 2% for all that value. It's like saying, hey, you know, the person's going to build your house. Why aren't they saying, hey, you should only pay X amount for people to build your house? You know, I mean, where, <laughs> why is this crazy? It's coming down on agents and everything. But let me tell you something. I want to give... Uh, a shout out. I want to, I want to give advice to, to the buyer's agents out there. All right. If they're going to, if they're going to advise buyers on what they should charge, I want to advise agents on what they should charge buyers. All right. And here's what you should charge buyers. NT with the T, NT thing you want. Charge them anything you want. Two, three, four, five, whatever you want. Put anything you want on there, whatever you feel like your value is, whatever they feel like your value is. And if they aren't willing to pay it, that's okay too. Here's the flip side. What's going to actually happen, and here's, an, here's what's going to happen in reality. Say you sign a buyer agreement for 3% with the buyer, all right? They've agreed to pay you 3%, and they've agreed to pay you whatever you can't get from the seller. If you get 1% from the seller, they'll pay you the extra too. They've agreed to that. Okay, there's that scenario. You go and you negotiate the deal. The seller's not offering a, any kind of compensation or seller concessions or anything. You put it in the offer that you want the seller to, to cover 3% uh, seller concessions so that you can cover your fee, so the buyer can cover your fee with those concessions. You put it in there and the seller will only, uh, will only do 1%. Easy fix, easy fix. You rate you once you get the agreed on price, right? Then you raise the price two percent, write an addendum changing the price to two percent, and say the seller's now paying three percent. They're paying three percent. We raise the price two percent, so the seller's still netting the exact same number, and your three percent is now figured into the deal. And a lot of agents immediately say, Well, what if it doesn't appraise? What if it doesn't appraise? I don't do deals based on what might happen later. I, am, I, am I an appraiser? I've seen things appraised for way more than I thought, way less than I thought, and everything in between. You think I'm going to negotiate a deal based on trying to predict what an appraisal is going to do? No, I'm going to get to the deal that everyone is happy with first, and then later, if, if the appraisal is low, I'll use that as leverage to negotiate, to renegotiate the deal. If, if, if through that, nego let's just say through that negotiation, they actually negotiate, they actually appraise it 2% lower, right? I get 1%. Am I going to come after my buyer for that other 2%? No, I'm not going to sue my buyer over 2%. If they, in fact, I'll say, Hey, you agreed to pay this on paper. What do you think? Right? If they say no, what am I going to do? 
take them to court, take my client to court, not going to happen. See, I've got my back against the wall. We're going to be in other negotiations where the seller says, all I'm going to pay you is, is $2,000. I know you normally get 15, 20 grand on this, but I'm going to pay you $2,000 because you're not even my agent. And this is what I want to net. And if you don't take this deal dead, your client ain't going to get the deal. What are you going to do? You're going to have to take it. What if they say zero or your client ain't going to get it? What are you going to do? You're going to have to take the deal. And now if you have agreement with your client that says that they're going to pay you, then you go that direction, but they're your client. What you going to do? And you're looking to get future business and referrals and, 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 and continue to build a, a big name. Now, if now if they're backing out of the contract too that they signed saying that they're going to pay, that's something you guys could have agreed to up front. You know, like, like you don't like, like I'm not going to pay. Like whatever you get from the seller is all you're going to get. Like that could be the agreement. You know, let's sign for three, but whatever you get from the seller, it's all you're going to get. Great. Let me get out here and see what I can get from the seller. And this is where the skill comes in to negotiate. This is it right here. I have always had a great ability to negotiate. I've always been great with numbers and I've always made the numbers work. I would sit down with deals that I'm in the middle of negotiating and I would crunch them numbers until they got to a place where it made everybody happy. I may come down on my commission a little, that me and the other agent may crunch a little. We may not do anything. We may bring the buyer and seller together. You know, there's different things the seller wanted, the thing the buyer wanted, there's repairs, there's all these things. And I was always a great negotiator of just making the deal work. I've always flexible, always flexible. So on my deals, if you look back through my career, a thousand deals, and I want to, I'll just say about 800 or so, right? Round number speaking was listings. And either I negotiated at the point of getting the listing down a little, or I negotiated at the point of the purchase agreement or I negotiated at the point of the repairs being done, or I, or, or I negotiated at closing. Sometimes we went to closing, something would happen, I'd throw in some there. Um, so there was actually like a handful of different negotiation points that I could use if I needed to, um, to make the deal work. And just about every, just about every single deal I did, there was something I did, even if it was just like, I got the AC service and I paid for it. Like there was always something sure. There were a few deals here and there where I paid nothing and I got everything, but most deals I did. Um, and I did it in the sake of making the deal happen and making everyone happy and keeping everybody happy. This is an art. Right. The art of negotiation is not just the art of staying firm, showing your value and doing all that stuff. The art of negotiation is actually being flexible, also dealing with the emotions of the other um, parties involved. Um, and, and at the end of the day, the real result of a great negotiator is getting the deal done, which is what I was really, really good at. And this is going to be the skill that a lot of agents don't have. They're going to have to develop as we move forward that they don't have because they've just been basically order takers. You know, people call in, they want to see properties. Okay. Boom, write an offer, you know, maybe team leaders negotiating it for them, or, you know, they didn't really have to put a lot of like work into it because they're handling the buyer. Most of the negotiations of stuff like that kind of falls on the, the, the listing agent because, you know, whatever they offered in MLS is what the buyer agent is going to get. And now the listing agent is kind of dealing with the seller who's ultimately, you know, has signed to pay all that commission. And, and so I think a lot of the negotiations ended up being on the listing side for the listing agent. And now the buyer's agent is going to have to actually develop that skill um, moving forward. Um, so I, I, if I were a buyer agent, I would look at this as a huge opportunity to develop that skill. I would do everything I could do to get in front of the right people to learn that skill. I and mean, this is stuff that we talk about on the challenge. You know, if you want to take the challenge um, and, and join the coaching program, like this is the kind of stuff that we cover um, to make sure that you are ready to roll, that you are um, in the best position possible to to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to develop these skills anyway 
kind of getting long-winded. I appreciate you. I hope this video helped you. Hope it gave you a different perspective. Uh, if you want to see me making live calls, calling prospects, and watch the master in action, click this video right here and uh, and enjoy because I'm going to set a couple listing appointments. I'm going to get a couple buyers, and we're going to have some fun. I'll see you on the next video.